everybody. We're getting into game one, winning side. Let's go. Yeah, and as we start in game number one, we know that Skeletor has a lot of experience with Great Sword and Sword. And we also now know that Bakanko has a lot of experience with that Taros. When they were loading in, they had a level 94 Taros. So they know the range of that weapon very, or of those weapons very, very well. And they know the damage ability with their character. I mean, if you got level 94, Ooh. you almost have to know that. Right, so as we Skeldra go into this game, so aggressive. look how aggressive Skeldry is right off the bat. Just dealt so much damage onto Bakanko. Bakanko cannot seem to land. That's what I'm talking about. If you're getting your landings caught by Great Sword and Sidelight. But, AJ, what was that just now? What was that? Uh, that was a four piece combo leading into a recovery. And, and Skeldra, I mean, they're, they're a different style of JM player that I'm, we're not used to seeing. A lot of like great sword players really try to land that read, but Skeldra knows the combos so well. He can just dare into the combos and, and lead it into these, these amazing knockouts. And he's just launching Bakako in the yellowish orange already. Bakako is starting to pick up the hammer now, but is it going to be fast enough for them to be able to just knock out before Skeldra gets the one on them. Oh, Skeldra, when somebody is just jumping off the stage like that with that side swing, that's how you know that somebody is feeling pretty good about themselves in the moment. Skeldra picking up the late light mm. blue. Oh my goodness, that's the D-Light into the side. You get knocked off stage, you gotta eat that weapon toss, and Skeldra knows, hey, even if I got a good cover, I know I'm not making it back. So let's just go on to the next stock. But already, Skeldra seems to be the one that is confidently in control of neutral. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh, okay. You almost got vibe checked. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, we saw a vibe check there, and they keep on vibe checking each other back and forth. And it's funny because when Bakako uses that hammer, they go for stomp side air a lot. You know, they're trying to get that. It's not true, but it's very close to being true combo onto Skeldra. Because Skeldra goes in for that three piece there and just knocks out on Bakanko. And Bakanko's goal right now is to keep Skeldra off that neutral control, kind of keep them in the air so they can go ahead and do the damage that they need. Okay, Skeldry trying to land with the recovery. Bakanko just able to get a couple of sidelights. I love heavily sidelight. It's so funny. It's just like shoving you in the face. D-Light into the side. And finally comes out. And Bakanko. Mm. Yeah. Terribly strong ground pound. Massive hitbox. Just able to go ahead and take out that stock. And Bakanko is keeping themselves in this game right now. Despite Skeldry being, you know, so much of a highly seed. Uh, so much of a highly PR placement to Bakanko. This is amazing. Yeah, but Konka has been taking that neutral control from Skeldra. However, Skeldra did go ahead and take it back a little bit. And will it be enough? It might be! Oh. That two-piece does go ahead and come in, involving that signature. But Konko now is wet beat. Skeldra has an opportunity, and they maximize on it, but it does not go because we are on Demon Island! And they're just trying to style up this way. Look at him go! Oh, Bakanko trying to get that JCD light, not able to find it, stomping away, just looking for that next big hit. But Skeldra fighting the down air into the neutral air. That was beautiful. That was such a nice way to clean up that stock. Yeah, Skeldra. Skeldra just played off of that situation so well. It was super, super tense. Both of them starting to like slip up a little bit. And that down air was amazing because it was such a non commitment. It was saying, if you get into this, that's it. That's the stock. I know my follow up here. If you don't get into this, I'm probably going to get away with pressing this button. Yeah, the recovery frames that they had, I mean, they, they didn't have a lot of recovery frames after that there, right? So they would have had a, a couple of different opportunities to do. If it lands, it lands. But Bakanko is reading on the sweat beads of Skeldra a lot. Like that second stock knockout came down. So ground pound, they confirmed it because they knew they had no more recovery options come back to that platform. And I think now, you know, Bakanko kind of knows what they need to do against Skeldra. But I think Skeldra realizes what they need to improve on. And they oh. already have Bakanko in orange already. And look at Oh him my go! goodness. did a zero deck within 15 seconds of a coco. Welcome to mid-game great sword. Welcome to late game great sword. It's oh, okay. I know oh. your defensive options now. I don't have to just go for side lights and end lights. I can mix you up with a D sig, with an end sig, and then Bakanko off stage. Such a well timed dodge. But Skeldra able to be uh, with punish that ground pound. Bakanko is just desperately trying to catch his landing, and Skeldra is completely unfazed. This second game, <gasps> almost connecting that side light again. Bakanko, Bakanko is being mixed. Bakanko is suffering. Oh. There we go. Bakanko realizing that Skeldra was going to jump and comes in with that two-piece ground pound knockout option. And I think right now, Bakanko keeps running into that one sidelight option of Skeldra and is having a rough time really rebelling against that. Because once you have that, it, lead, it can lead into a couple different options based on how you dodge. But Bakanko does go and pick up that hammer and is keeping Skeldra in the air a little bit. But it isn't enough because Skeldra comes in with a GC downlight into recovery and knocked Bakanko out of that second stock. 
Is Delgia looking to pick this up with a good cover leaf, perhaps into a neutral lane? Not able to find it, and that is just going to be the stock immediately. But Ponko able to clean it up, and I gotta say, to be able to come back during this game, when you were at such a deficit, that was incredible. Oh, but Skeldria is such a good way to punish. I do, I do love the play styles of both these players, where they're both aggressive, and they're both willing to take those risks, and, and have fun with it a little bit. It looks like both these players are really focused and having fun with what they're doing they're not going in for they're going for crazy stuff that we usually wouldn't see from any of these players and that's what they're kind of known for Sheldra so does go ahead and get jump red by Pocongo and a double sire comes in clutch and Pocongo taking a game to their name over the one and only Skeldra AJ that quality pressure was excellent at the end of the day, mm -hmm. when you're at the corner of a stage, you don't have a lot of places to go. You don't really want to willingly put yourself off stage unless you're desperately trying to punish somebody. And especially mm -hmm. with both of the weapons that Skeldra has, right, with Sword and with Great Sword, you need a little bit of space. You don't have an option that you can just immediately press like that. So Bakanka was there, staring down Skeldra, keeping him in the corner, and was able to jump and catch uh, you know, the jump with the with the side of it. That was such a good Three, read. That two, was just such good one, understanding of, you know, pressure and what people do in that position. When somebody is stuck in the corner nine times out of ten, they either try to, like, dash in or they try to jump out of it. And Skeldra got punished for it. Yeah, and Skeldra, I, I think, didn't really know what to do in that situation. Beca they didn't expect Bakanka to stay in that same spot for that long. They thought they were going to be able to Bacanco jump around or down. try to... He looked at him. He, he yeah. made sure that Skeldra did not go anywhere at all. Bakanko did it back up. He Ooh. held... He stood on his business, AJ. They did indeed, but now they're both standing on their business in this next game here. And Skeldra, with that neutral control, picks up that sword, gets a down lane into side air, and lands it again. But Conko having an opportunity getting knocked out. And Skeldra with the final side air to go and finish it off. And it just comes down to them reading the jumps of Bakanko. And Bakanko's having a rough time getting back to that ledge outside of uh, against Skeldra, because Skeldra's just punishing them so well. Okay, Skeldra just able to get the falling neutral in. Bokanko tries to rush in there with the side sig. Not going to be successful, though. I love the mix-up with the downer and almost got the follow-up off the top. Bokanko not able to take the stock off the top either. Downer into the recovery. Skeldra picking up the grid sword once again. Oh, oh, nice. AJ, what is happening? That two-piece led into a dodge read from Skeldra on the Bokanko and led into a signature knockout. And I think... Skeldra's expecting Bakanko to dodge really quickly, and that's what they're doing. You're kind of seeing them dodge inward or dodge really fast, and Skeldra's reading on that very, very well. And now we're seeing Skeldra just combo Bakanko and might be able to three stock him here. But like, oh, missed the signature Bakanko with the backward side signature. And Skeldra doesn't three stock them, but might have the opportunity of two stocking you them can't here. Come back for this. There's just snow. And Bakanko, you did so amazing last game. You're just going to have to go ahead and hold that. But wait a second. You're off stage against Axe. You're off stage against Terios. Anything can happen, especially if you're getting hit by that end signal. Okay, at the moment, Skeldra just trying to get in there. Bakanko just landing so many consecutive downers. And there it is. Just to the face. Beautiful stuff. Skeldra are going to be taking out that game. The reason why, by the way, that second stock transpired in, like, the end of that last stop was because of uh -huh. Skeldra's weapon toss to get back onto the stage. I wanted to point that out because uh, Bakanko was just staying on the stage, holding onto a hammer, I believe it was, um, trying to keep Skeldra off stage. Skeldra jumped on, weapon tossed on, and that was such a quick mm -hmm. option that Bakanko was just not ready for it. Bakanko was not ready for Skeldra to cover that kind of space. Yeah, in weapon throws, a lot of players will use to, and I'm glad you brought it up too as well, Dara, is weapon throws are used by a lot of to take advantage over like a certain momentum. And we've been seeing that a lot from a variety of different players. But now, I mean, we saw that in the past game and I think Skelja was so comfortable in the matchup. He was going on arm to that final sock with that side yeah. signature. So going into this game, you know, Skelja's going to be a lot more comfortable. He might go for some riskier stuff that Bakanko oh. might be able to take maximize on. But they had no more options. Come back to that ledge. And Skelja with their sword ground pound knockout, realizing that Bakanko has no more options. And they're going to land exactly on this side of the ledge and, to max and maximize on it. That's right, but oh, Bakanko, I can't believe the down air didn't come out. Skeldrew had just enough time to be able to press that end light. Bakanko tries to go through the side air. Skeldrew just dodges through. Skeldrew, how do you reset neutral? Oh, you get behind Bakanko. This is the worst position to be in. You got almost no jumps left. Skeldrew tried to catch the landing with the weapon toss and unfortunately missed, but Skeldrew going off stage with that GCD light.
Yeah, and Bakaku does go and get a sub side air, but Skeldra was trying to push a lot of pressure, even with unarmed against Bakanko. And I think once Bakanko is under that stress, they have a rough time really readjusting themselves. I think Skeldra knows that, right? Because you're seeing Bakanko now going in for some risky things until they have that neutral control again. And, but it's, it's kind of hard to do to get Skeldra because they're dashing a certain way. They're being a certain style of aggressive and it's working for them. And now you have Bakanko coming in, having their neutral control, like he says, stop. Uh, side air option that they could have taken, but oh, Skelter missing that neutral, allowing for Bakanko to go ahead and get that stomp neutral air, get into a axe pickup, yep. but is it enough? No, oh. it's not. Skelter with a double neutral air knockout, and that neutral air doesn't usually knock out, but the way they landed it on Demon Island was mind boggling. Yeah, it was so close to the top last one. Bakanko, though, is just still continuing to fight for life at this point. Tries to go for the down. Skelgy just continuing to punish all these landings. Weapon tossing up and just GC delighting the other way to cover as much space as possible. Bakanko is getting juggled again and again into infinity. Bakanko finally landing the down. Oh, the down light into the side. Skelgy still makes it back on. Yeah, and, and we're seeing Skelgy really have this overall control. But Bakanko having a neutral control gets the neutral light, misses that down light option though, does pick up hammer, weapon star Skeldra, makes things one stack all, but Bakanko is so low on that final stock. They're gonna have to do something crazy on Skeldra to be able to bring things back. Conceptually not impossible, especially with Tellers. That NSIG was crazy. I cannot believe that Bakanko did not get punished for it. Skeldra trying to land. Bakanko almost delaying the own landing with the GC stomp. Ooh. But you use up your dodge. You finally got it back. You make it back on stage. Skeldra with the side of Bakanko almost no tools to get back on. Skeldra is just barely missing that side light. Looking for the recovery. Looking for a way to be able to land here. Bakanko backing up. Giving Skeldra a bit of space. And Skeldra just keeps on tossing these weapons. Yeah, and Skeletor is very comfortable with the situation right now. You're seeing Bakanko off that ledge. You, you impulse jumping into Skeletor's down like in the side here. And Skeletor winning this set over Bakanko 3-1 with a lot of their edge control and a lot of their greatsword. And we saw a lot of that tonight. And, I mean, Skeletor just felt very comfortable against Bakanko. Yeah, that was, that was essentially planking. Bakanko, Bakanko was stuck off the, uh, like, in